everyone. As you can see from that little fun clip before, um, I have a very special project for you guys today. This is a Nerf Supermax 5000 that has been converted to shoot micro steppings. Uh, it has a 16 inch, 17 30 second brass barrel. The tank has been relocated from the front to the middle as they normally are. And I have added a Raider stock which still retains some of its extension functionality. Uh, it is a very, very powerful blaster. It shoots well over 100 feet easily. And it breaches on the side. So it's pretty cool. It takes six pumps on a plug pump to get maximum range and it shoots I don't know if you guys can see the white smoke blur that usually comes out of the end. I'll shoot it one more time. You guys probably caught that one. Um, but yeah, also like I said, the stock still extends and basically what I'm going to need to do to show you that is I take off this little wing nut here and that slides right off to make sure you don't lose it. You pull out this screw and you pull it out one notch and then you put the screw back in through the side here. And then you have an extendable stock 5K. I don't think I've ever seen one done this way. But all like I said, I don't know if I've said that yet, but this is a very, very large blaster. This blaster is easily, uh, let's see, here's a rainbow pump body, is easily, I mean, six inches to eight inches longer than a standard one. So I don't, I personally, I'm kind of a short guy. I'm only about five, eight and a half. Um, I don't need the extra stock length, so we're going to go ahead and put it back real quick so I can show you guys a little bit more easily. Stock backs is fixed, and... Now I'll show you guys the sliding breech. This is a, a 9 16th sheath inside of some PVC here with a nice little decorative brass knurl there so you can grab a hold of it. And it's really, really easy to slide forth and back. <laughs> um, I kept all the original rings, which are right here and right here. Um, I had to dremel the front one out a little bit to be able to fit the PVC contraption I built up front. But overall, this is a very nice blaster. It is a very long blaster. This is a... Uh, a primary for somebody who likes to pick their shots and is, you know, range conscious. Not somebody who's, you know, with standard rainbow pump or me, like with a double rainbow, just spamming off as many shots as you can. But with the stock in the closed position, I can easily shoulder it, and I've got a nice, good position for my barrel. Um, it's stupid accurate with good darts, and I guess we'll just go outside and shoot it. All my darts are trash, so I'm just going to be shooting with three domes. Uh, Two of them are kind of wore out, and one of them is super domes. So it'll just give you kind of a, you know, a baseline, kind of how it shoots. And then I'll come inside, and I'll do a penetration test on some cardboard with the super dome. All right, guys, I'm outside, and it's about 25 degrees here, so I'm going to be quick about this. I'm only going to be testing it with three kinds of darts, because uh, all my slugs are completely wore out at this point. I've got a white dome with a single BB, a uh, beige dome with, I believe, another single BB, and then I've got a super dome which I've got five of these to shoot, and these are probably the preferred ammo out of something like this because they will shoot the absolute furthest. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to just run through this real quick, and I'm going to edit it so, you know, I don't have to pump. Three white domes first. All right, my white domes were pretty crappy. As you saw, that first shot just dipped right down, and the other two went kind of wild. Uh, the white domes probably shoot about 100 feet because to my fence, uh, if I nail the fence, it's going like 120, 130, but if it hits that hill right there, it's going about a hundred or so. So we're going to try some of these beige domes, which I hope might be a little bit better. Alright guys, those beige ones flew quite a bit better. Again, those are pretty old. I haven't made domes in a while. But now we're going to use some of these new super domes I made. They're uh, 3 16th ball bearing weighted, straw reinforced Busby foam. They should shoot quite far. Alright guys, I see the super domes easily have the most impact force and they hit very hard and they're doing probably 130 to 140, um, if not maybe a little bit more, but I don't have a long enough range testing venue to do that. But they definitely have a lot more impact force, but you can tell by them whacking the fence pretty hard. Alright guys, here's the internal overview for the 5K. Um, first basic thing you need to know is that it has a 16 inch uh, 17 30 second brass barrel um, it's quite a long barrel for this blaster but it helps give it the range boost that it needs for it to be a proper you know long range blaster um, this is just half inch PVC which is sheathed with uh, some electrical tape inside spacing it and a one and a, I believe it's a three quarter to half inch bushing I shaved down to fit in between the uh, stock part there and then a custom polycarb ring let me see if I can get you guys down a little further to see that it help keeps it centered within the actual barrel. See this part here? Um, yeah, I made that to fit in the stock uh, little slot here. 
And that goes back, and we've got the breech, uh, I don't know what you call this, I guess a breech block or something like that. Um, I'll show you guys the other side later on in the video. It's just basically half inch PVC with a, another one of those bushings, and it's got a, uh, a standoff and a little brass knurled piece in there. Um, it comes back into the tank, which is a standard 5K tank, nothing really changed. Um, these front parts of the 5K tanks like to crack, so I just put a piece of half inch PVC that actually reamed out with a uh, Dremel to fit, and then epoxy that on just to give this part some extra strength. Um, and it's inside of here is a piece of PETG which interlocks with the 1732. So there's no adhesives right here, and it doesn't really need any. Uh, it just helps keep everything, you know, airtight. Um, pump is plugged, standard thing. Uh, tubing replaced, some zip ties right there to help hold it on because these stock caps tend to like to crack. Um, of course, the pin is bent. That's one of the hardest parts to do about the 5K is if you bend this too much or do not support it enough, you will break the back of the tank, which is no bueno. And now we come to the major part of the mod, which is the addition of the stock, which is just a Raider stock. Um, you see I leave all this stuff intact here. You cut a slot out of the bottom here, and basically that stays the same. There is one bolt goes through this stock screw port here. And then we come to the extendable portion because this is, you know, still active. You can only go out one more notch, but that's usually enough. Uh, this is already quite a long blaster holder, holster. And let's get this off. Little wing nut comes right off, pops out. And then you get more extension here. I have a couple holes drilled that line up. And this part is free floating. That way that it uh, is allowed to move with any you know slight discrepancy in the stock. Let's go ahead and put this back in. If I can get everything lined up without it being in the shell, oh yeah I can. And then we'll screw this back on. And whenever you want to change it out to the extended portion, basically you put it through this hole in the side. I've got two separate holes drilled, just for simplicity. And I've got this part down here, all epoxy reinforced it because it can put a lot of strain on the shell, especially right in this area. So I decided to stuff a bunch of putty in here to help reinforce it, and it did help. And I did do it to both sides of the shell, as you can see here. And this part basically slides right in here. Let's get it all lined up again, like so. And it's molded to fit. And a screw goes through the side of the shell right here, like so. Let me grab a bolt. Basically just goes through right through that part of the shell right there. Now a lot of people ask me, how do you get the tank to mount? Now what I do is I lube up the 5K tank, and I basically put a glob of epoxy putty in each side. And you see you get a mold there, which squeezes the tank whenever you put it back together. It's a pretty standard thing, but getting the 5K tank actually lined up perfectly inside the shell is pretty big pain in the ass, honestly. So I guess we'll lift out the internals real quick. Let me get set up for that real quick. Okay. There we go, spring goes flying. That comes off. Here's your breech. This part still comes off, I need to epoxy that on yet. And uh, this brass here on the breech has been polished to a high finish to make the breech slot, excuse me, absolutely smooth. Here's the breech I talked to you about, the breech block. Got a little aluminum standoff that's actually countersunk in there, super glued in, everything else. And then you got this little nice little brass neural piece which slides right back over there. And now you've got the other side of the shell which obviously has a very very nice cut in it for the breech. Well that's it for the internals guys and uh, let's go on to the next segment. This blaster packs a ton of power into a very nice comfortable package with also some pretty good accuracy of course depending on your dart super domes are pretty crazy accurate but um, overall it's a very nice blaster I'm very happy with it came out if he still wants me to color match these pieces to like a stockish color I will try but I honestly think it looks pretty good in black um, but, you know, that's personal opinion. You can choose whatever you like. Uh, it overall just came out really nice. The internals are very nice. It's all mechanically fastened on here. It's very strong. You can actually use this as a stock, you know. It has a little blue smoke effect. It's pretty cool. Um, the breech has been polished, so it's super smooth. Overall, very nice blaster. I'm very happy with it. And uh, I hope to be making more videos for you guys soon. I know it's been a while since I've made videos pretty frequently. I've got a couple more projects here on the ground and across the room and everywhere else that need to be fixed and finished. But as soon as those are finished, I'll let you guys know and I'll be posting a video. 
for now, if you want to keep track of what I'm doing on a more regular basis, usually than videos, you can follow my Facebook page, which I will link in the description below. And everybody have a great day wherever you are, and I hope to talk to you guys soon.